Naming Ionic Compounds Part 2 Writing Empirical Formulas for Ionic Compounds Okay, so now we're going to learn how to write formulas for ionic compounds. So the key concept here is that when you have an ionic compound, it is electrically neutral. That means it has no excess charge. So it doesn't have an overall positive or negative charge. It's completely zero. And so basically, you have to cancel out the positive charge on the cation with the negative charge on the anion. And they don't need to be one to one. Often they are, but the number of cations to the number of anions doesn't necessarily need to be one to one. But the bottom line, you have to make sure that all of that charge is canceled out. So for instance, if we had a plus two cation and we bonded it to a negative two anion, then that, can, that charge would completely cancel out. So just showing it mathematically right here, so here's our cation charge, and if we add our anion charge, we add those two together, we get zero. So that means that the charge is all canceled. Okay, so we want to learn how to write an empirical formula for an ionic compound given the elements that it is formed from. And so what we're doing basically is figuring out the ratio of atoms in that ionic compound, atoms of each element in that ionic compound. So we're going to start by determining the charge on the cation and the anion given the element. Okay, so we should be able to do that from the previous section. So we saw if we have calcium, we know that calcium forms a plus two cation. If we have fluorine, over in the nonmetal section, we know that it forms a minus one anion. So the first thing we always will do is identify the anion or the cation that's formed for that element. Okay, so here's a little example. So we're going to determine the charges on the ions for a compound involving potassium and the elemental symbol right here, K, capital K, and bromine. Okay? Now, if we look on the periodic table, we're going to see that potassium forms a plus one cation, and it's a metal in group one, okay? And bromine forms a minus one anion. All right, so we want to determine the lowest number of potassium cations that can completely cancel out the charge on the bromine anion. And so we're going to create a neutral compound by balancing the charges. So Potassium with its plus one and bromine with minus one, we can easily see just by inspection that one potassium is going to cancel out one bromine. So one potassium cation cancels out one bromide anion. So our neutral compound would look like this. Okay, so there's our potassium cation, there's our bromine anion. If we add the charges together, they get zero. But just to make sure it's incorrect to leave the charges like this. See, I did that wrong. So you don't leave the charges on the compound because you're basically going to show that it's overall zero. Okay, and chemists know that potassium is plus one and bromine, bromide is minus one. And so you're just going to write the empirical formula without showing the charges. So not this, you're going to just write it like this. Okay, so KBR and that's called potassium bromide. We're going to learn how to name those a little bit later. Okay, so let's practice a little bit. So pause the presentation and write the formula for a compound formed from lithium and fluorine. So use your periodic table and what you know about each cation and anion. Okay, you might have to go back a little ways for fluorine. Step one, we're going to determine the charge on the cation and the anion, okay? So lithium is a metal, forms a cation, so it loses an electron, and it's in group one, so it's plus one. All right, and fluorine is a nonmetal. It forms an anion. It is in group seven, so it's a halogen. It has a minus one charge, so it gains one extra electron to be like a noble gas. Okay, so then, Let's figure out how many lithium cations we need to cancel out a fluoride anion, okay? And it's easy to see, you know, plus one on lithium, minus one on fluorine. If we add those two together, a one to one ratio of lithium to fluorine works, okay? So not writing the charges, we're just going to write the metal first, then the nonmetal. So we have lithium 
and fluoride. So lithium fluoride.